pause these things all right i bought them a while ago pasta unbox them actually was the first unboxing and she's like oh my god they're beautiful and they are absolutely striking there's no covers you don't need them do you need covers hell no look at this thing now it is the this is sort of an emergency message because these are the r15 pms powered monitors and i got them in cherry but you know it's not real cherry it's just a vinyl wrap but they look exceptionally nice and cherry which uh is no longer available on amazon sorry only one used pair and the one used pair they want 260 dollars for it i'm pretty sure when i bought it let me see if i can view the order history hold on sometimes this works sometimes it doesn't come on nope doesn't work i'm pretty sure i paid a little bit over 200 for these and now the black version of them which isn't as pretty is going for 329 dollars so whoa 329 is a lot are they worth that mm, we're gonna go over that in a second because uh What I will say, though, is these have been replaced. I went to Amazon to look these up, and I went, wow, those are expensive. And I went, and they went, oh, there's a newer model available called the R51PM. Instead of the 15, it's a 51. Is that a thing now? They just reversed the numbers, and that's the second revision? Anyway, you go to that page, and they're 494 fucking dollars. What? What? That isn't even, a, a, like, a thing. Like, how? What? 494 so $500, basically. So I got them for two. Now they're looking around three. And the replacements are five. And you know what? The replacements, I don't know if you could see this. Let me see if I can click this and click this and then click this and then click this. They just aren't as pretty. Not even close. Bigger waveguide. Deeper cone, but all exposed things. And this is a flush fascia. And there's the corner with the LED and no exposed anything and clips. And that's just sort of like clips reference, but ugh, that's like ugh, ugh, I don't like that. And it's got the, the, the line around the outs. No, no. So that's automatically like, oh fuck, I better review these before they disappear because they're going to be gone. So is 330 worth it? Well, I don't know. You want to pay 500 for the next revision? I don't. Five inputs just like your mom remote control and we'll look at the back of it in a second but i'll just show you what the remote control looks like power mute volume led there's this little cutout here that's for the infrared receiver and for the led isn't that nice you could turn the led off now it's blue because we're hooked up to the bluetooth which is my phone <laughs> Since we're hooked up to the Bluetooth, these last track, next track, play, pause buttons work. I point out the speaker. Speaker gets the signal. Does it have to be playing to change track? Hold on, let me see if I've just diagnosed something. No, I just no, I just had a fart. It had a fart. So yeah, you get play, pause, next track, last track works i believe it might work with usb i don't know I, I can't hook up usb to my review desk so here are the five input buttons we'll get to up to here in a second phono which actually that reminds me i need to do that now that's playing auxiliary which is i'm using this little uh, ap80 from hideous that's auxiliary opticals there Bluetooth is my phone, which we have paused. And then we can hit USB, which has nothing plugged into it, which will act as our mute. And if you didn't notice, all the LEDs change color. I like it. It's nice, it's simple, it doesn't need a screen, it doesn't need to tell me that it's on Bluetooth. If it's blue, it's on Bluetooth. If it's red, it's on optical. If it's green, it's auxiliary. Phono is purple. USB is white, although it's a little bit just off purple because they can't really make white. The most interesting thing on this remote, the reason I bought it in the first place, is because here it says sub plus, sub minus, and reset. And there is a subwoofer hooked up to this set right now. 
that subwoofer, you know, the best subwoofer, the mini rig subwoofer, and you can actually, let's switch to an input, what's gonna get me kicked off the internet the least? The vinyl? Of course, it's a track that wouldn't have any low end in it at all. Optical, I have more control of the optical, there we go. Perfect, sub up. All right, that's maximum subness. So now this is going ham. Now, um, mute. That isn't the ideal sub for this set of speakers, but it's nothing to laugh at. That's a $170 subwoofer. And it honestly is like hilariously good. Hilariously good. The problem is um, the sub, even though we can control it up, down, and reset it, it still doesn't pull those frequencies out of the drivers, which is going to automatically turn off about 87 people who would otherwise be buying these speakers. That's one of the things that a good receiver or a mini DSP can do, is you say, I have these speakers. I do not want them to produce bass. I have this subwoofer down here. Mini DSP, would you please give these speakers 80 hertz and above? And subwoofer, would you please take 80 hertz and below? And everything balances out beautifully. Um, when you just have a basically a pass-through that just says all the signal still to the speakers and then all the signal out to the sub then you sort of like are tweaking the sub to get it to balance and this is a nice add-on it doesn't do what I want which is the plug-in cut off 80 Hertz and below from the speakers and then you'll get a little more volume out of them without distortion it doesn't do that but having the actual ability to adjust the sub means can legitimately just take if you know maybe during the day they're like me you can't play music with a subwoofer on you can just lower the sub down or you think this song needs a little more bass you could turn it on up do they need a sub well they're only a five and a quarter they're ported we're gonna take a look at them in a second they're five and a quarter they're ported and you get away with them without a sub because you just you can get away with anything without a sub could they does it hurt no but yeah no but yeah, I'm hearing the needle on that, okay. Uh, I will say this also. Of, I've managed to balance like all the inputs. I, I lowered the computer's optical down a little bit and I have this like an 80% and the Bluetooth is maxed out because Bluetooth is always a little bit quieter. But the phono is extra a little bit quieter and that has a lot to do with the needle on it and this is acting as the phono pre. So when I'm on phono, unmuted. Like that's, that's decent. And then if I switch to like, I don't know, auxiliary. Again, I have the volume down on this when I go to optical and it's just so loud and it's down. It's just, so you're gonna have a couple issues with the balancing of things. Only the MX3, the topping MX3 standalone speaker amp really did justice to keep everything level and I was amazed by it. It's one of the selling points of that damn unit. Ooh, LED spirals is on Bluetooth. Holy shit. Bring the sub up. Sub up. I can't play too much. I'm just going to get demonetized. And I'd really rather not do that this year. Um, how do they sound? Let's get, before we go on to pulling them out and looking at them. RP150Ms are up there. Those, I said, are some of the best sounding uh, near field monitors I've ever heard. And they still are. And they're still a little bit better than these. Just a little bit better than these. Just a little bit. They're, they have a little bit, I mean, let's walk up. Here, let's look at this baby here. Different tweeter, different speaker. Right, yeah, you can see that's, that's truly aluminum with the folded in uh, dust cover. And uh, and this is just, it's just a different driver, right? You're not gonna, to get these powered would take some more money, just more money. Who knows, maybe the new ones are those. Because those are still about 20% better than these on a desk. But here's the thing. You know why, what I'm gonna say now, right? You know what I'm gonna say? I'm gonna to point to this remote control, I'm gonna to point to this optical input, I'm gonna to point to the sound bars that don't exist, although I did order two of them, the sound bars. 
Um, put these in your fucking living room, please. 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 And you could tell that they're sort of going for that with the cabling. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something. I undid all the I opened all the cables. I'm not using them all because I don't. And this is look at them. Okay? Okay. Main power cord. Oh. Oh. A dual RCA cable. Oh shit. Is this an optical cable set TV audio out to PCM? It literally is saying, hook this to your fucking TV and stop buying sound bars. And then we got a U oh, USB cable, A to B, which doesn't explain for noobs. And then you get this wire, which says speaker wire. And the way you're supposed to hook the left and right up is with they give you this raw speaker wire. And it's actually, they tin the ends, it's nice. It's plenty long. It's hella long, I didn't even undo it. Because these will be going in a yard sale, if you don't know. Yard sale. Join my Patreon, $5 a month, from the 1st to the 10th of every month. If you're seeing this review in January, which I doubt it highly. But if you are, February 1st to the 10th, you get to join my Patreon. Bid whatever amount of money, $148.31. If you're the highest bid, you win. I pay shipping. Ship it to the United States. You're in the Ukraine. You're in Russia. You're in mainland China, Indonesia. Uh, then I pay half the shipping and you pay the other half of the shipping and then I still ship it to you. Pimping myself out, all right? I also got to see this review about a week early. So it's probably, this is probably going to come out, this review, you're, you're watching this live February sometime, come March 1st, these will be in a yard sale. Not because I don't love them, but because I have too many speakers! So yeah, look at the labeling on this. They This is designed... For people who don't know anything, they easily labeled, well packed, beautiful looking. Put them in your living room. Stop buying sound bars. I bought two sound bars. I'm gonna listen to what they sound like. It gives you right here, boom, optical. So that's just gonna take over. Oh my God. That is a brick wall, baby. That is a brick wall. I said, I, I asked how they sound, Zeos, and I said they sound 20% less than those, but I still have to tell you how they sound. Low end is solid. Enough, enough to get you by. You will not be like, oh man, these have nothing. They have more than nothing, which is all you really need, especially if you're putting on a bigger room. Here in the desk, I think for the amount of money that the replacement is, 500 fucking dollars, you could do better. The Vanatu T1 Encores are coming out. There's uh, the Swan M200s are out there. On a desk, you could do better. But in a living room, if you just need something to pop up on little baby, I'll, I will link two foot speaker stands. I'll link these speakers. I'll link the replacement of these speakers, all the links. Put two foot speaker stands right next to your television. You plug a fiber optic in from your television. You search your Amazon Prime videos and you go, oh, I want to watch Hand of God today. And then it just plays. And here's your little remote. It's actually, it's one of the, it's like the same remote everything comes with. But Klipsch has done a good job of like actually utilizing everything on it. There's no blank switches. You could tell it was made for this. If you decide to get a subwoofer, I will link at least one or two subs in the description. Because in a big room, you know, the low end that these produce is sort of gonna fade away. It's okay here in a desk, it's okay in a small room. My big living room, I would recommend a sub. Imaging, depth, let's talk about it. Because I was sitting here and I was just playing with the features, I was playing with the vinyl, and I was playing with all these other things. There's We were between tracks. I can never tell what's going on in a vinyl record. And I just started actually listening. And you know, clips used to be, clips, old clips used to be, oh, that shit. It's just screaming treble and then thick, thick, muddy bass. It was sort of like Sir and Vega's twin. But Sir and Vega stayed there and then clips actually grew the fuck up. So Klipsch, these are amazing. Now there's a replacement for those speakers, the new 600s, and Klipsch themselves have agreed to send it to me. So it's like, oh, I wonder how much they're gonna cost. 
I wonder how bad they're going to be. Are they going to be great? Can they continue the greatness? That's all I need. Because these are pretty fucking good. I'm not going to label them great, but they're PFG. PFG, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, the title of this video, Future Zeos, PFG speakers. Pretty fucking good. Mark. Mark that. Label that. Hashtag PFG. Um, they're certainly some of the prettiest. Like, I have a, a pretty wide selection of beautiful speakers up in them. Oh, God, yes. These are right up there with them. If they came with a with a cover, that would solve everyone. Like everybody is like, uh, everyone is not the same. Someone might just not want to see this, and I hate those per those persons, but I could see them existing. Let's look at the back of it before I run out of like brain cells. Move this. Oh, uh, come with me because it's an interesting. And uh, I like to point out, and this is either by design or by accident but the entire fascia is flat. The speaker doesn't stick out, which means on a flat surface, you could actually just do this, which is fucking rare with the speakers. Here's your port. You do have a volume control on here. I mean, it's dead center in the back of the speaker, so that's like an emergency thing. You could press it to change source, or you could turn the volume. Can't control the bass. Here's your phono or line, so you have a choice. So you literally can flip the switch and have it be a phono preamp, or a line input. Next to it is the auxiliary input, which is a three and a half millimeter, which I'm using that crazy fancy cable that RBH makes. Here is your subwoofer out, and I'm using a like one half of a three and a half millimeter because this sub is a three and a half millimeter inputting sub. You get your fiber optic there, and you get your USB audio there. So that's straight in a row. One, two, three, four, and then fifth is Bluetooth. There's no antenna sticking up or anything like that. Down here, you get your two left speaker out. That's another thing that sort of bothers me, just, just a little bit, is that these speakers, these designed like, oh, use me as a powered monitor, should all have a switch that says what this speaker is. Because this has to be the right speaker. Because on Bluetooth, you just can't choose. If it was, if you needed to put the powered one on the left, you can't. With analogs, you can, you just reverse the left and right. But when you have it say left speaker out, you're sort of forced to put this to the right. So let's hope that if you're putting it in your living room, you have power over there, and maybe the fiber optic is over there so you can make a shorter run, whatever. Now, I'm also using the Mica speaker cables to go left to right, because it does support um, banana plugs, but Klipsch decided you were gonna get raw wire and not something with banana plugs, because F you, buddy. There's also a ground terminal if you wanna use it for phono with a ground. My turntable doesn't have a ground, so we're not doing that. And then all you have is the hardcore power switch and a standard, uh, I forget what the actual name of this power plug is, D-sub? Don't know. Pretty picture of a Skyscape, uh, Skyscape? Cityscape? Cityscape, that's what I meant to say, on there. So yeah, if I fl flip this to line, we don't get phono, we get a very quiet line level. So really, this thing has two analog inputs, two digital inputs, and Bluetooth. When I bought it for $220 or something, that was like, holy shit, what a deal. Now that it's creeping up to $300, it's like, well, that makes more sense. And trust me, once these are gone, the replacement at five fucking hundred dollars, uh, it's going to be like, oh, Jesus. I don't know what the new one does. I don't know what... It looks like the exact same unit. As far as, like, the, the construction, like, the size, it doesn't look like it's adding something crazy. And there's a lot of competition up there. So if you can grab this for under 350, that's pretty much like due. That's pretty much due. Because if you don't, then you're grabbing the RP150Ms and you're grabbing a Topping MX3 and you're wiring it up yourself. And that'll give you everything but the phono preamp. Essentially. And a headphone out. Okay. Let's do some last second listening on this phono. Mute. Oof. Is that that sub? I'm gonna uh, reset that sub. It's like resetting that sub, unplugging the sub, doesn't... Yeah, you still get that nice knock. You still get that nice knock. Oh my god. There's a dog here. Oh my god. Where are you?
three. What are the odds that on that player will be the Fifth Element soundtrack? And then literally Bruce Willis is playing on this. Is this a secret M. Night Shyamalan plug for glass? Yes, it is. Uh, I didn't arrange that, so it's just magical. I was hoping that something also Bruce Willis related would be on this, like the Die Hard soundtrack. <gasps> No. Mute. Anyway, enough of the dub. My my obsession with Bruce Willis. By the way, download Bruce Willis's. Um, go to see if he's on Spotify or Tidal or Tinder. Bruce Willis. If it don't kill you, it just makes you stronger. Is an album that Bruce Willis did back in the day, and I'm here to promote. In fact, you know what? If I can find it on CD, Amazon link in the description. Bruce fucking Willis. Good musician. All right, these speakers are very pretty and getting sold in the yard sale. They're not available. You can't get this color anymore. So look elsewhere. Look for Fry's Electronics. Find eBay. Find somewhere else if you, if you want this particular color. Because he is very pretty. Here's the back of this one, by the way. It's just it's just a speaker. It just is, is un speaker. <sighs> Damn it. So I should do these reviews, like, I don't know, four months earlier than I currently do. Next one will be faster. Buy for living room, buy for desk, buy for looks, buy for life. Allstate. I feel like that was a commercial. Um, yeah, so check these out in the yard sale. Sound demo in the description. That's something that's got to come up now. I, I'm probably going to do it on this desk with the headphone recording rig because that seems to work. And um, download the wallpaper. She's looking good over there, right? Right? Girl? Girl. Wallpaper in the description. Links to this in the description. Links to the Patreon in the upper right in the description. There's also a $10 tier where you get into a private chat with me and a bunch of other people who just want to ask me questions all day. And um, I, I don't hate it. So there you go. Yeah. Links to freaking everything. And, and Bruce Willis. And I'll catch you tomorrow. That could be my catchphrase, because I'm doing these daily. See you tomorrow, everybody. We're doing more stuff.